Kare Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. Today's painting is more about the paint than the process. We are going to talk a little more about core golden watercolors. The materials used are listed in the description below. We are painting on Hannemüller Expressions Cold Press 100% Cotton and the brushes are Escoda Ultimo number 14 Mop, Escoda Perla number 10 Round and a Windsor & Newton Professional number 1 Rigger. You will also need some cling wrap and masking fluid. We are working with a core palette today. The base colors we use are cobalt blue, permanent alizarin crimson, transparent red oxide, transparent yellow oxide, Payne's gray and transparent pearl orange. We will mix these colors in the palette to create some variations. Prepare your paper by placing it at an angle of about 15 degrees. Draw a rough outline of where you want your elements to be. Add a few dots of masking fluid in the foreground for the poppies. Allow the fluid to dry completely before you continue. About 7 to 10 minutes depending on your environment. Once it's dry you can wet the paper with a large mop or a hockey up to the horizon line. Now core paints are unique as they are created with a binder which is quite different from other paints. It uses Aquazol, which is supposed to replace gum arabic and is claimed to have better pigment holding capacity. When you work wet into wet, the finer particles spread wildly and the Aquazol holds the mass of the pigment a little before it also spreads. The effect can be mesmerizing. Some of the paints spread more than others. Nickel Azo Yellow, for example, sometimes spreads much wider and faster than Hansa Yellow Light. This means that you need to keep an eye on your water control. The sky is painted with cobalt blue, a few touches of the purple mix, and then a little bit of transparent yellow oxide and a few streaks of Payne's Grey. Use the tip of the brush to pick up small amounts of paint as these tend to spread more than other planes, remember. This way you can keep control of the washes you lay down. Mix a bit more cobalt and alizarin crimson to have more purple ready for the heels. The paper is still very wet, so make sure that the mixture is a bit stronger so that the paint can spread but not cause cauliflowers. Drip the purple mix into the heel areas and then add some of the cobalt and red oxide mixture. The paper has dried more in some areas than in others, so the paint spreads unevenly to create a more natural look. Straighten the horizon line. Add some Payne's Grey to deepen the shadows and shape the heels a bit more. Now you can start dropping in the greens and other colors for the tree line. Don't fiddle too much. Drop the paint and let it blend on its own. Because core spreads so nicely, it almost creates its own tree shapes without much effort from the artist. The oxides make the colors warmer and more vibrant, so the tree line on the right comes forward while the purple hills in the background disappear into a hazy distance. It is amazing to see that you can drop in so many different colors and it does not create a muddy effect. 
Each color can be seen and even where some colors granulate, it simply enhances the texture and creates interest. When you are done with this part of the background, you can allow the painting to dry completely. Now we're going to wet the foreground. This is where you are going to use the cling wrap a little bit later. In order for the cling wrap to work effectively, you need to build your paint layers. Start with a base of yellow oxide. Let it flow into the moisture on the paper. Then use the green mix and the brown mix to add variation by making upward brush strokes. These colors are a bit warmer than the purples and greens in the background, so it immediately creates distance. Add a few strokes of purple to the horizon line underneath the hills. This ties the background and the foreground together. Make the foreground warmer by adding some more transparent red oxide. Add some purple for the shadows. Many people say that one shouldn't use core with other paints because of the different binders. However, we've used them with Winsor & Newton, Holbein and Daniel Smith with beautiful results. So don't be afraid to mix and match. While you wait for the immediate foreground to settle a bit, add some green and then dots of alizarin to the middle ground. The poppies are only a splash of red in the field. They won't be distinct or detailed. The red forms a beautiful contrast between the cool greens and purples of the background and the warmer oxides in the immediate foreground. Add some red oxide. Keep the cooler alizarin towards the horizon and dot in the warmer red oxide lower down. Add a bit more shadows here and there to the immediate foreground. This makes your paint layer a little bit thicker and will help when you use the cling wrap. So now it is time to get your cling wrap ready. Place the cling wrap on the paper and press it down firmly pinching the plastic here and there for effect. The paint might spread around a bit during this process, but it will only enhance the effect. If you want greater contrast, add some stronger pigments here and there before you place the plastic onto the paper. Now you can let it dry completely. This may take a while. Once dry, you can pull off the plastic to reveal the lovely texture below. This technique creates natural light and dark areas and sometimes helps to separate the colors a bit. Use a rubber cement eraser or your finger to remove the masking fluid. Now you can go to that lovely rich alizarin for the poppies. You will dab them into the white spaces to begin with. You can use the rigger or another small brush. And this is also where the transparent pearl orange comes in. Adding a dot of the orange at random will give variation to the poppy field. It will also diffuse some of the red a little bit so that all your poppies are not a uniform red or a uniform orange color. It just creates a lovely variety. A few poppies in the immediate foreground can be singled out, but as you go further into the field, 
you will use larger splashes of red and orange. Nothing definitive, as the eye does not single out tiny shapes at a distance. You will only see a sea of red. Coarse alizarin and transparent orange form a vibrant contrast to the subdued background wash. You can use a little bit of water to dilute some of the red washes in the middle ground. Keep in mind that the flowers will become darker or more intense in color and more distinct as you move towards the foreground. In the background, they are just a blur. Add a few lines of green and brown for grass and for stalks. You can keep adding red to the flowers in the front to intensify the color. Now you are going to splatter some red for fine dots of colors, but be careful, shield your sky area. The rigger has a flexible tip, so splattering can go wildly out of control here. If it does, you can lift out the rogue splatters with a paper towel or leave them to dry and then lift them out lightly with the tip of a damp brush. Use Payne's Grey for the tree. This color can lay down as a lovely blue shade when diluted or a dark blue-black when concentrated. Use this to your advantage. The tree can have light and dark branches to give it a bit of dimension and variety. This tree is not the focus point. It simply balances the composition in relation to the tree line on the horizon on the right. So draw your branches randomly and without much precision. Use the tip of the brush to add a few leaves. Vary between stronger and more diluted washes for the leaves and the branches. Make sure the tree does not spread further than about the left third of your picture plane. Allow it to dry a little bit. While you do this, you can enhance the reds a bit and you can also add a bit of paints gray to the base of the picture for shadows and also at the base of the tree line on the horizon.
Vary between the paints grey and the purple mix to give variation to your shadows. The tree should be a little bit drier by now, so now you can add another layer to it to make it a bit denser. Use the purple and then stronger mixes of the Payne's Grey. The tree grows in a field, so it can be a bit wild and untamed, so make the base denser and draw thin branches to fill out the bottom part of the tree. See how this second darker layer gives your tree a more 3D look. The lighter branches look as if they are at the back of the tree and the darker branches look as if they are in the front of the tree. If you still have a few stray splatters in the sky, Use the tip of the brush and make small check marks on the dots to create birds. If you feel you want to enhance the red a bit, you can now add a final layer to your flowers. This will make them more prominent and emphasize the contrast in colors. Core paints stay vibrant and spread beautifully to create amazing natural looking landscapes. The colors don't muddy so much and give great variety when diluted. Let us know in the comments if you have used core and what you thought of them. Please help us to keep the channel going by subscribing and press like to keep the channel in the YouTube feed. We really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you again soon. Vaya con Dios.